Uh, good evening, Mission Control. Um, in one of my previous videos, I talked to you about the fact that we lost all of our microgreen crops. We lost everything that we had. And uh, we're, we're pretty sure, sure it's due to uh, uh, two different types of fungus. And tonight, instead of me fumbling my way through trying to figure out what they're called, I think Hasselhoff or uh, powdery something or other, uh, and there's another one, Dusseldorf or whatever it is. I can't remember them. So I called in the big guns. Tonight we're gonna have Mrs. Martian, my wife, who uh, really is starting to learn how to do all this stuff, talk to us through kind of what she thinks the problems are and what she's doing to try to figure out the solutions. So let's, uh, let's jump in and see what she has to say. Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Martian, and uh, we're gonna turn it over to you, and you're gonna kind of tell us what's going on and what happened and why we're out here tonight. Sound good? Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna get out of the camera. Okay. <laughs> So last week I came out here and noticed that there were even more black spots on the radish. The pea shoot started getting this white silvery stuff on them. It was almost like it was coming from the insulation. And um, it was enough uh, to make a stop in our tracks and say, what is this? We even called over our neighbor who has a history of working in greenhouses in California and has dealt with this stuff before. And she confirmed um, my fears that it was a fungus and she thought that the fungus on the radish was damping off and then the fungus on the pea shoots was a powdery mildew. And then also the kale had these little tiny black dots all over them and she thought that that was also um, a powdery mildew. So uh, we decided um, to stop all production, unfortunately, which totally sucks, especially because of our heating bill right now. Um, and try to figure out what's going on. One possible origin we believe um, that the fungus is coming from is the coconut core. So we store the coconut core in this bin and we wet it throughout the week and then we close the lid. So thinking this might be a source for fungus to grow. We're thinking that another possible origin for the fungus and the powdery mildew might just be in the air. It can be transferred off of our clothing, pets may bring it in. Um, so we're thinking that the fans may be blowing the powdery mildew or other fungus across the microgreens and around the building and spreading it. Another possible origin for the fungus might be just our seed. Um, it may be carrying the fungus on it and spreading it that way. So in one of the beds, I noticed that there was some powdery stuff on the lettuce. And so we're thinking that a possible origin might be on the aquaponics rocks themselves. However, um, these plants look pretty darn healthy. So we're a little concerned that a possible origin might be the digester. Um, right now it's not heated, so it's not killing any of the mold or fungus that might be in there already. Um, and we've been putting all of our microgreens in the digester, um, or at least some of, some of them and then the spores could be going in the air. Thinking that when we do overhead watering, we're creating the perfect environment for the fungus spores uh, to do their thing. And we're creating a humid environment, essentially a microclimate for the fungus to grow. Not enough airflow is also a potential cause of the fungus growing. You definitely need the air flowing through the microgreens to dry them off, especially when we're overhead watering. When the plants are too densely planted, they don't have room to breathe and the air can't flow through them. Essentially, um, it could create more problems as well. And that could be another cause because the microgreens have to be planted so densely so we can get the weight for market. Our humidity in this building, according to this dehumidifier, is 42 right now. That's about perfect. We wanted it about 50%. So we're wondering why the heck are all these problems happening when our humidity is perfect inside the building. But unfortunately, because we're doing the overhead watering, it's creating a little microclimate near the microgreens and it's creating its own humidity. So I have talked to a couple of growers who produce microgreens uh, near this area and they both mentioned the fact that the coconut core could be the thing that's causing the fungus problem and carrying it. 
So we definitely need to keep an eye on that. Another potential is that it could have come to us already with a fungus on it and the coconut core itself could be infected. So another possible cause is the temperatures aren't right um, or they are exactly right for the fungus to grow. Uh, it might be too cold at night. We keep the temperature 65 during the day and 55 at night. Temperatures might not be ideal uh, for the microgreens or might be ideal for the fungus to grow. As soon as we walk in the door, we could be carrying potential contaminants for the building, unfortunately. Uh, we could be bringing it on our shoes. We do live on a ranch. Mr. Martian likes to wear his boots in here and get who knows what on the floor and I'm guilty of it as well. Um, so the floors, on our clothes, you know, sometimes our dog likes to come in here. He could be carrying it. There's lots of different means for entry. So we're definitely going to have to look into being a little more careful. Another possible cause is it may not just be one thing. It may be a culmination of a lot of different things or a couple different things. We know that we need to get to the bottom of what is causing this stinking fungus. Um, so we decided to systematically try to figure out what the root cause may be. So not only are we doing all these trials, we're also sending some samples in uh, to the OSU Oregon State University Plant Clinic and they're going to help us do some um, diagnoses. So I'm really excited for those to come back and, and see and compare them to our trials. The first trial is trying to figure out if airflow and placement near the fans or away from the fans will help or eliminate the fungus. This tray of radish is planted right directly in front of the fan. I didn't do a midpoint for the radish, um, but I did do a midpoint for the kale. So there's an airflow experiment for kale, pea, and radish. And then at the very end here is the one furthest away the, from the fan. So we're comparing obviously the amount of air. Trial number two is water. So we're determining if I water more is the fungus more present? Or if I water less, is the fungus less present? Or it could be vice versa. So this tray is watered more, this tray is water normal, and then this tray is watered every other. So this trial is the kale water experiment. This trial is the radish water experiment. And then this guy over here is our pea water experiment. Trial number three is to determine if the seeds are the origin of the fungus. So we soaked all the seeds in hydrogen peroxide and then planted them. So just to clarify, uh, we did soak the seeds in a three to 100 ratio of hydrogen peroxide to water. And we did that for all the three microgreens that we're currently growing. And this is the trial number three of kale. This is the trial number three of radish. And here we have the pea. Trial number four is to determine if the planting density makes a difference in the amount of airflow the plants can get and in the amount of fungus that we're getting. So this is P, he's still germinating. This is radish and here we have kale. So for trial number five, um, we kind of get off a little easy on this um, because we sent in samples to Oregon State University on our cocoa core. So we sent in samples of the one um, that has been stored in the bin. And then we also sent samples of the fresh ones out of the package. Trial number six is figuring out what type of funguses we are dealing with. So our awesome neighbor, uh, we are so blessed we have great neighbors, um, came over and said that she thinks we might be dealing with damping off for the radish and powdery mildew for the kale and the pea shoots. So we decided that we would send samples off to OSU and really get to the bottom of um, what the funguses are. Oregon State University has lots of extension offices around um, where you can take plant samples into and they will help you diagnose. The one that we're sending to is to the main office in Corvallis um, where they're able to do a little more thorough diagnosing uh, to figure out what's going on and we actually have to pay for this one versus the free service. Trial number seven is trialing potassium bicarbonate. We've done a lot of research on means um, to help prevent and help stop the spread of the fungus. 
Um, and pota potassium bicarbonate is something that has come up time and time again. People also use sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. Um, I decided to try potassium bicarbonate. Um, we're gonna do an experiment to see how well it actually works. Trial number eight is seeing if the combination of more air and watering less makes a bigger difference with the fungus. Here are the radish microgreens that are right in front of the fan. I'll be watering those every other day. I watered them today. Here are the kale for the more air and less water. Again, I'll be watering every other day. And the pea shoots over there for the experiment are still under germination. Trial number nine was Mr. Martian's idea. Um, he's the one who thought the digester uh, might be causing all of these problems. So um, we did an experiment to see if location made a difference. Location in the greenhouse made a difference on if the fungus grew or how much it grew. So here's trial number nine over here is lonely self still germinating. Hopefully I'll be able to take the cover off uh, tomorrow or the next day. The other half of trial number nine, we only have two trays uh, for this trial is to see um, if there's possibly more spores on the south, south facing side of the building um, as compared to the north or just if being away from the digester makes a big difference. A couple of these experiments were able to end today. Uh, the airflow experiment and the water experiment uh, we were able to conclude today. Um, we still don't know for sure um, if more airflow makes a huge difference or more water makes a huge difference. But on the pea shoot side, the pea shoots with the most water had the most fungus on it. Um, so we do know that water plays a difference with the pea shoots. So the airflow trial ended today. Um, the pea shoots have been in here a couple weeks and that's our gross band along with the kale and the radish about a week. And so unfortunately um, we have concluded or maybe fortunately um, that there's not really a big difference in airflow. So uh, these pea shoots right next to the fan um, had about the same amount of fungus as the ones all the way down there at the end. And the same was for the radish and the kale. They were all pretty consistent throughout the whole um, grow bed. So the watering trial is also ending today um, for the pea shoots, the radish, and the kale. Um, this one we did find some evidence that it does make a difference. So these pea shoots are watered the most. These are water normal and these every other day. These pea shoots out of all the pea shoots experiments had the most fungus present and these were the ones watered the most. So they even had more than the airflow, all of them. Um, so watering does make a difference with the pea shoots. So through the water experiment for the kale and radish, we learned that it really doesn't make a big difference on how much you water. I mean, there's slight variances, but they were pretty consistent throughout. So for those, we found that water really doesn't make a big difference. So after watching um, one of our favorite microgreen YouTube channels, Curtis Stone, um, he suggested spraying um, with a hydrogen peroxide mixture. So we did try that um, just to spray the seeds and it really didn't make a big difference. So another thing that we have tried is um, these felt mats. So um, this one I planted a couple weeks ago. The growth is um, pretty crappy. It's not nearly as tall as it should be. But the good news is, is out of all the kale in the building, this is the only one that isn't showing signs of fungus. So it leads me to believe that the copal core really might be a cause. But the other thing is I did spray this one with a hydrogen peroxide mixture. Um, and it's not growing any fungus. So we don't know if it's the hydrogen peroxide or the felt mat. Although I did spray this both and I did spray uh, trays with the cocoa core with the hydrogen peroxide mixture and the hydrogen peroxide mixture, I believe on the trays with the cocoa core still grew fungus and these ones are not. So trial number three is still in progress. However, I've already noticed and observed um, that I am seeing fungus and black spots on the radish already. I'm actually seeing more fungus 
visible on this radish than I am on the water trial that just ended. So it makes me believe that seeds really may not be the problem because after soaking them in hydrogen peroxide, uh, the three to 100 ratio, uh, they're still showing significant signs of fungus. These trials have been a bit of a pain and this whole process has been a bit of a pain, uh, but we believe that God has a plan in all this and good things are gonna come from it. Um, we're excited to try um, new experiments on bottom watering. We have some new cool things coming that I'm sure Mr. Martian will show you. Um, and you know, this will really help us in the future when we do get our aquaponics fully running. We know that we're gonna run into these issues. So to know what we're dealing with and to know how to tackle it um, is gonna be very valuable and it actually has been kind of fun you know playing detective and trying to figure these things out um, i used to love playing the game clue growing up um, and, and now i'm trying to play the game of clue instead of a murder mystery it's a fungus mystery but uh, uh, hopefully we'll get it solved really soon okay well looks like you have your kind of your arms around this whole problem and yeah, I mean, this is pretty well organized. You did a nice job. It's a little overwhelming, but we're getting there. Well, you took a complicated project and a problem and you really broke it down. I'm really proud of you. Nice job. Thank you. I've learned That's, a lot from you. That was pretty cool seeing her go through all those things. She set that all up. She did all that. that that's all her <laughs> ideas there. She, she makes that all happen. So really nice job. It's, uh, it's really important that we figure this out because of how much we spend on heating. Yeah. And I know you're motivated just yeah. as much as I am yeah. to get that done. because We have other things we can spend our money on. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to develop so. a system when you just are burning cash in the heater. So um, I guess the good news is, is that you all get to learn from us as we go through this experience. And, and the really good news is this isn't anything new. It's just, you know, everyone that has a greenhouse or grows indoors, they all have this problem. Right. So we're just figuring out how to deal with it given our particular circumstances. So yeah. anyway, uh, we'll get back to you again in the future and let you know how it's all going, but we just wanted to give you this update and show you how we're tackling this really important problem. Right now it looks like we're going to be shut down for two months, um, so that's $3,200 worth of heating that is, uh, we're hoping YouTube is going to help pay for it, honestly. <laughs> so we're doing lots of videos trying to help pay for everything, so uh, be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, give Mrs. Martian a thumbs up because she's doing an awesome job. Be sure to subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Patreon, and, uh, and that's about it. You can get updates there. So in the meantime, everyone, this is Mr. Martian and Mrs. Martian <laughs> out.